Welcome back to Nysora YouTube channel. Now today we're going to talk about difficult spinal anesthesia in a patient with a very large body mass index. Clearly, patients with large weight present a difficulty in a clinical scenario, whether you want to do a lumbar puncture or spinal anesthesia, and yet these patients greatly benefit from spinal anesthesia and avoidance of general anesthesia. Now, traumatic placement of a needle and multiple attempts during an uraxial block have been related to numerous complications. Some of them are transient, such as postdural puncture headache, transient neurological symptoms. However, trauma to the neural structures or spinal hematoma can also occur and cause permanent neurologic injury. In addition, multiple punctures are associated with pain, patient discomfort, and bad experience with anesthesia service. Several factors have been associated with the difficulty or technical difficulty in getting a neuraxial block or lumbar puncture. As an example, advanced age, the gender, the body mass index, and spine deformities. But in this video, we're going to demonstrate one strategy that you can use to facilitate spinal anesthesia or lumbar puncture in patients with difficult landmarks and large body mass index by using ultrasound to determine the landmarks and by combining spinal needles to reach the interthecal space easier. Now, generally speaking, spinal puncture is easier to perform in younger patients, which is expected due to the less incidence of spinous deformities, uh, less incidence of osteophytes, their ability to better position themselves, and a better compliance during the procedure. Now, patients with a high BMI, obese patients, and patients with generally with a large weight have a very poorly palpable interspinal space. So determining the midline and the space of needle introduction can be very difficult, leading to multiple attempts and failures. But let's talk about the equipment. Spinal anesthesia is often performed using atraumatic needles, such as 25 to 29 gauge with atraumatic tip design. And here's a few of them. So we have pen cane needle, we have Sprout needle, we have Whitaker needles. These needles are very similar. However, small differences with regards to the opening in the needle for injection and obtaining CSF very slightly. But what you need to know about these needles is they're advance through the tissues very, very poorly. And this is why we always use an introducer through which we pass the spinal needle. In performing a lumbar puncture or spinal anesthesia, the needle has to pass through several different layers. This is skin, subcutaneous tissue, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament. Then we have the ligamentum flavum, the dura, and finally the subarachnoidal space. Now, for performance of a spinal anesthesia or lumbar puncture with a fine needle, we really need to use an introducer. So, introducer is a needle that is used to pass through the tough structures such as skin, supraspinous ligament, and interspinous ligament. Once we place the introducer needle in that space, we now can pass the spinal needle over a finer gauge or smaller caliber, usually with a blunt tipped needle that allow us to be atraumatic. And that introducer provides a stability for the smaller gauge needle path into the CSF. So this will be a, an example of atraumatic needle. And here you can see how much the needle can bend. This is why we always use an introducer. However, with obese patients, you may want to use a larger introducer, such as 22 gauge quinky needle, which is nine centimeter long, such as in our patient. That way you pass the needle deeply with a great degree of control, and only then you introduce a tiny needle to reach the interthecal space. Once your introducer is deep, controllably placed close to the epidural space. First, it is very important to optimize the position of the patient. For large patients, most of the time, sitting position is almost always better than the lateral position. You can also use ultrasound to determine the midline and the depth of the interthecal space. In this patient with a BMI of 50, we could determine the midline easily. We can also count the level at which we need to perform the block 
and we estimated the depth of the intrathecal space to be at about 10 centimeters. So here we have the patient in a sitting position and we are using ultrasound with a curved transducer to determine the midline which we can see in this image as well as the level for the spinal anesthesia. So we have set at level L3, L4 and we inject local anesthetic for skin and subcutaneous tissues. Then we insert a 22 gauge quinky sharp tip needle which is nine centimeter long to serve as an introducer. We would like this needle to pass between the, the spinous processes that is and through the interspinous ligament very close to the dura before introducing a 27 gauge atraumatic needle. So we first remove the stylet from the quinky needle, then we take 12 centimeter long atraumatic pen cane needle. So we are passing this needle through the quinky needle into the subarachnoid space. As we withdraw the stylet, we start seeing the appearance of the CSF through the atraumatic needle, which we placed through the quinky needle, using it as an introducer. And here's the CSF coming out. Once we have the confirmation by appearance of the clear CSF, we attach three milliliter syringe with two milliliters of 0.5% bupivacaine in this case, and injected while aspirating at the beginning and at the end of the injection to make sure that the spinal injection goes into the proper space. And here we go. And that was it, spinal anesthesia in a difficult, morbidly obese patient with a very large body mass index of 50 in this particular patient. So again, it does take a little bit of understanding of the mechanics and a three-dimensional approach to the spinal anesthesia to be a little bit inventive about using additional equipment that can help us pass through all the barriers and be more precise and predictable with placement of the needle into the subarachnoidal space. If you like this information, be sure to subscribe to Nesora YouTube channel. See you next time.